welcome to Eli McHugh, Kaylin Delero, Hannah Owens, and Pollard math teacher Sarah Burns. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited that at Pollard we've introduced and implemented a new program called Data Science which is uh, supporting and strengthening math education at the middle school level. Ms. Burns, what is data science? Well, data science is a class that we started last year for seventh graders and this year expanded it to eighth graders. And we take a look at data of all kinds, mostly data visualizations, things like graphs, maps, but not your, just your typical graphs. We've looked at a lot of creative uh, art and ways that we can express data through uh, visualizations, physical representations, and we just ask a lot of questions about what brought us to see the data as it is, what kind of conclusions can we draw, what more might we want to understand about this, and it touches so many different fields, not only um, uh, population data and things related to um, things that we do in our everyday lives, but things that we might want to see in the future, like uh, environmental factors or um, just like the things in our everyday yeah, world. That we see. So uh, you are absolutely right. This is the second year, but now it's the first year for eighth grade students That's that right. we've had data science. Real briefly, what, what's the, um, the impetus for uh, having this data science? I mean, we, we have a math program at, at Pollard, so, so why data science? Well, data science is connected to math because we look for patterns and we talk about numbers a lot, but it's very different from the standard curriculum that we teach in seventh and eighth grade. It's a way to stretch our thinking and make connections to other fields, and it's really related to many, many other fields and other jobs that our students might see in the future. So I want to ask Eli, and really all of you, and you can, you can jump in. So how, how did you happen to sign up for and participate in data science? Well, why this class? Because I know that there are other options for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I took it in the beginning of the year, and I really liked it. And I had a choice um, in the end whether to take engineering or take the class again at a higher level and I thought because I liked it and I liked how it varied from other math, math curriculum that I would like to try it again um, so I just signed up for it again. And tell me a little bit about what you actually do in the data science class. What, what, are, what are some of the activities? What's some of the, the learning? So in data science we study <clears throat> data sets and representations of them and visualizations. So we'll go like basically we had a project where we went to Newman and we figured out a way to simplify some big numbers and make it in a way that um, fourth graders would be able to understand them better. So I want to explore that a little bit more about going to Newman. Um, and you have to tell me all about that because I love the idea of you going over and talking to the students there. Um, we'll get into that. Hannah, uh, how did you get involved in, in this data science course? Um, so I like kind, kind of heard about it last year and my parents signed me up for it and I didn't know that. So I got my schedule. You're not on blaming the first your parents, day. are you? No. Okay. I got my schedule on the first day and went to the class, and I really enjoyed it in the first trimester. So I decided to do it in the third trimester too. And what you really enjoyed it? What did, I mean, it's a math class. What did you enjoy about that? I liked it because well, I like math to begin with, but like building off of it and not just focusing on like a specific formula or numbers was really cool, and it like looked at it in a different way, and I thought that was something cool. Yeah. You know, Ms. Burns said that you look at things like population, or there might even be something on climate change, or on you know using these big numbers to understand them. Can any one of you share uh, a recent assignment you had where you were looking at a big data set and what that data set was, um, and, and what did you do with it? Um, well, we just recently uh, studied um, bee populations. Bee populations. Right, okay. and how they had declined um, in the past. Um, years due to climate change. Um, so obviously that, that, those are some really big numbers, but I think it was really interesting to see correlations to what was going on in the world and what had happened that you might not associate, like you might not associate bee populations with a any other thing like um, uh, CO2 emissions, but it actually has a really big impact and looking at visualizations helped us realize that. And, and looking at that data, and I imagine with this data science, you're talking about percents and, and uh, percentiles and, and manipulating numbers like that. Um, what's another example of a data set or something that you studied? Um, well, we also looked at planes and like how many delays there are and how many like go in and out of certain airports, like all over the U.S. and the, I think it was the world too. 
and we kind of looked at a map and used a website that let us make our own visualizations and look at different parts of the data set, which was cool because we got to like zoom in on certain things that were interesting to us. Who's, who's doing most of the work in the classroom? Is the teacher doing most of the work and standing there and saying, okay, do this next, do this, or or are students involved in, in making some decisions and working together? Because I, I don't know what that looks like. Yeah, I think Ms. Burns usually get, gives us a data set and then it's kind of like up to us on how we want to work with it and usually we get to work with each other and like other people in our class. So, Kaylin, you said a moment ago that you brought this over to Newman. What what happened at Newman? Newman's an elementary school. Why, why were there why were there Pollard students over at Newman with their data science class? So our group specifically, we decided to create a presentation about building heights. To so which which grade level, by the way? We went to fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay. So our group, we did the presentation on building heights, and we decided to represent it using something that they were more familiar with, like school buses and themselves. So we showed how many of each it would take to stack on top of each other knowing that they could interact with it. So we had a Kahoot, and we had Jenga blocks for them to stack up, and we had that proportionate to the actual building. So they had a physical model to be able to represent the actual size of these buildings. And how did the students react to you interacting with them? Mm -hmm. like, what did that look like? Um, I thought it actually went really well. I think they, um, I, I'm sort of really proud of the way that we organized our lesson, because I think we focused a lot on the ability of the fourth graders to engage with it, um, trying to sort of minimize lecturing and making it making it a lot about stuff that they could relate to. You helped organize the lesson for those fourth graders mm -hmm. to make sure it made sense for them. Right. Oh, that's great. And how, how do you think they, they reacted? How many classes did you go to, by the way? All the fourth just, grade classrooms? No, we just went to one. Okay. And then another group in our class went to a, like a different classroom. And I thought they really enjoyed it. They were like all laughing and like they were so surprised when we like recovered the results based on what they had guessed. Well, I will tell you that it is incredibly powerful for high school students to go and visit younger students because they look up to you and for you to help design a lesson, particularly around math and data, is, is powerful and it's a really great learning experience and I bet if I went and maybe I'll have to do this, I visit Newman soon and stop into a fourth grade classroom, I'll ask them about it. And they'll remember, they may not remember everyone's name, but they'll remember what you were talking about. And that's powerful and, and, uh, and very meaningful. Uh, Ms. Burns, how, how many uh, students are involved in data science, uh, would you say, this year? Uh, this year we've had 50 to 60 students um, in the 8th grade program. And I'm not sure about the 7th grade program, but I know that several 6th uh, graders have signed up for the class coming into 7th grade. And the 7th graders are invited to uh, take this class that our students here are taking data science too. So there's a nice uh, progression through several different ideas and lots of different projects that we can um, work on. And we're still changing the class and kind of adapting to the students' current needs. As these students nicely said, it's really them that's bringing the excitement and the work to the program. So as they come up with new ideas, we're able to uh, respond. And, and incorporate them into the, the lesson plan. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of data out there. There are a lot of things happening in the world so that you can really manipulate numbers and, and study them in a way that is current and, and important, important to you. So real briefly, in high school, because you're going to high school next year, um, has this changed your mind at all about studying math or science or data? Um, is what, what, what is that? What, what, what's, what do you think you're going to be doing in high school regarding this, or just leaving it behind? I feel like it kind of opened the perspective on how broad um, the math field is. It's not just studying formulas, but you can also um, branch off and be more creative with it instead of following just the same pattern. And I think there'll be opportunities at the high school for you to, to do just that. I love hearing that, that it's it's making you look a little differently at numbers. Um, and I would imagine when you uh, see a story on the news or in social media or you see a graph or a chart, do you look at it differently than you did maybe a year ago? Absolutely, definitely. Yeah. Anything, that you, anything, example you can give me of what might be different for you? Well, we learn a lot about um, ways that graphs can be misleading. And this is just one example, but I think um, I've seen, I have actually seen a lot of things in social media about misleading graphs and um, I think 
through this class, I've learned to be a lot more vigilant and um, sort of automatically jumping to a conclusion after looking at a graph. I think that's a really important thing that this class has taught me. That not to jump to a conclusion, but to think about it. Right, and look at the scale. And the well, I have to tell you, if you're doing that, then there are a lot of adults I want you to teach because there are a lot of adults in this world who jump to conclusions. Sometimes I do myself. For you to pause, to be vigilant, and to be thoughtful about the numbers is a great takeaway and partnering with our younger students. Ms. Burns, thank you for kind of leading this thank charge. You. And I really appreciate uh, Eli and, and uh, uh, Kaylin and, and Hannah for joining and, and sharing data science at Poly. Thank you.